you only put on this one that's been used, which is the right. And I have that to myself, knowing that you're very active on Twitter, you're very engaged with the news, which I think have, with your beautiful phrase, humankind's good election for self-destruction. There's so much of it. And I just wonder what role the news plays in your news. <laughs> Voices. You know, the whole the music of Ulysses had a lot of the power, the 
the, the building Irish accents and so the musical voices that are somehow not exactly discernible if you hear the music. And so if you're feeling uninspired, probably the best thing to do is to shake yourself up and go out with it look for something that will enter you with a, with a lightning bolt. Thank you. Um, when you write, how do you manage your self-criticism and reach the state of unconsciousness where you're able to write in the various form? Well, I have to say, despite what some critics have said, I've actually never written unconscious. <laughs> Well, I did once write 
writing a whole novel constructed around a dream, it was very, very difficult. Because the image that comes to you is mysterious and you can't, you can't really figure out what it is. It's like getting a strange mineral that's glowing, you know, that sort of fell down as kryptonite or something. You sort of walk in, you're sort of looking at the strange thing. You know it has meaning, but you don't know what it is exactly. So you're kind of frustrated by it, but you don't want to throw it away because you know it's, it's valuable. So I wrote a whole novel called Mother Woman out of a dream that I had. It's so vivid, it's so much more real to me than most of my life. These dreams that we have sometimes are really vivid. And they stand out in a luminous way more than most of our lives, as Mrs. Virginia Woolf said about women's being. But I was haunted by them for years. And finally, when I constructed the whole novel around it, it takes place on page 300. It wasn't the beginning of the novel. I had to construct the whole world around it and then present that in a coherent way. And it's really, it was very, it was a great effort. You know, it's much easier, I think, to start off with a story and with characters and have an outline for a novel rather than even with the images. But when you look at a great painter like Van Gogh, and see how he's working with images and how passionate the painters on, on his canvases. You understand that another artist seeing the same, but seeing would write something, would paint something very flat and pretty or you know, attractive. But Van Gogh brings to it this intense passion, almost the passion of madness, and the paint's thick and it was very, very powerful. So obviously he was terribly haunted by some of his images. And that, I would suppose, is what makes him a great artist. And somebody else is just painting pretty little watercolors and things like that. But to take the image to some extreme, I can give you one example that was getting a little late. And many of you might know this. When, when William Faulkner was quite young in his late 20s, he was haunted by a dream of, of looking through a window into a room where there was a coffin. He imagined a little girl climbing a tree, and the little girl looks in the window, she's not supposed to look, it's like the forbidden fact of death for children. That was the haunting image of the began the sound of the fury. And when you read the sound of the fury, the little girl, Caddy, is the one who climbs up the tree. And Quincy's out of the ground, doesn't want her to go up, you know, it's one of the, the key scenes. But that was generated, the whole novel was generated by the dream. It's so touching when you're doing that Faulkner's little girl, little daughter had died a couple years before. So you can see how the personal, deeply wounded personal history went into the dream, and then the dream goes into the novel. But the novel of Sound of the Fury, as some of you might know, was written over a period of time. It was a difficult novel. It's a brilliant novel. It's probably one of the very great novels in the English language. But it came out of a dream. So if Farmer had had a dream, and he decided that maybe his, his daughter had died, he really maybe not have not written a novel. The other day I was teaching Tim O'Brien's the things that carry in my great story. It's a novel, it's a short story. I was teaching at Princeton, and all the students are so admiring them. That's a great short story. Except the being not going to read it anymore. And I said to the students, would you like to have written that story? They said, yes, yes. You know? And I said, would you like to have lived the, the experience that it would allow you to write a story? And they all were completely, you know, they didn't want to do that. And you can't blame them. 